Today, we're going to be going over how to run Stalker 2 better. So if you're playing Stalker 2, experiencing lag, performance issues, or crashing, this is the video for you. And before we jump into the graphics settings and some of the other things that we want to go over here, if you change settings, you applied them, and it says that you need to restart, do restart your game, because there's this whole shader loading thing that happens when you first start the game. That is something that does change every time you change the settings on your shaders and a lot of the graphics options. So sometimes the fact that you're having issues is just because you're too impatient and need to restart your game. Now, for everybody else, let's go over some settings that you can change. Now, first off, when it comes to overall quality, I always like to set everything to low, but some people have said setting it to medium actually works better when it comes to Stalker 2. It's really completely up to you. It's a little weird that that's how it works. So you can see texture quality. I have that set to epic. I'm actually running this on a 4080 right now because that's how I can record and not get the video lagging and all that. But this is going to work for anybody. Hair this is one of those things that you can really set down i have it set to high but if you set it to low that's not going to affect too much i have played with it so you can go ahead and set that to low with object details i like to leave that as high as possible the effects this does actually matter a lot in this game setting that to low will help again setting everything to low can help everything to medium is what people tend to find the best so maybe these you do want to set it to medium but i haven't noticed any issues setting these to low post-processing anti-aliasing all those can be set to medium or low whatever you have the default to when it comes to motion blur, I actually found this caused a lot of lag for me. So setting that motion blur to 0% reduced so many issues that I was having. The depth of field, I leave that as is. Enabling light shafts, that does cost a lot of performance. So that's something you might not want to do. Now when it comes to upscaling methods, I always recommend DLSS. If you have a 20 series or lower card or you have an AMD card, FSR might work better for you. DLSS seems to be the go-to, but for some people they have had better luck with that. Now here, this is one of the things that you're going to want to restart if you change any of these. Fading quality, changing this does affect a lot. So if you put this on low global illumination, turn that down, same with reflections and shadow quality, you can get a lot of bang for your buck there. It's something that is slightly noticeable when it comes to ambiance, but it isn't going to affect your gameplay as much as some of the other settings changing would. Clouds, fog, sky, foliage, turning all of this down does help. Foliage actually affects a ton when it comes to this game, so setting that lower than everything else will help. When it comes to weather, clouds, fog, and sky, setting that down a ton can help, especially if you're experiencing lag when there is weather. If you're experiencing lag all the time, these settings likely don't have much to do with it. And with draw distances, I always like to set those as high as I can because that gives you just more access to everything in the game. You can see things farther away and it's really nice. But I did notice that this setting actually has a huge effect on my card. Setting this to high means I can set or far means I can set everything else up to epic. So this is something that it's up to you. But if you want to play with this, this is going to help. Now let's go into the other thing that does matter. So when you go into display, there's a few things that you can play with here. First off, the screen mode, changing this from full screen to windowed can actually matter. I've seen it fix issues. It's weird, but it does work. When it comes to display resolution, setting this as low as you're willing to tolerate always does help. But do note, if you do have it set extremely high, DLSS won't have as much of an impact. That's just how it works. Field of view, this changes some. So if you do set the field of view lower to 70, instead of setting it all the way up to 110, that can reduce lag a little bit just because there's less stuff that needs to be rendered. Now, when it comes to frame rate, this is something that I would definitely recommend changing. Set a limit on your frame rate, 30, 60, 120 if you're a wild man. It's really up to you, or wild woman, it's really up to you. So yeah, with the frame rate, if you set this to 60 or 30, that's actually going to help feel, it's going to make the game feel a lot smoother. And there are some issues where graphics cards have been overheating. Setting this to 60 means they're not going to be maxed out all the time. It's going to reduce the likelihood of them overheating. Now when it comes to brightness, this doesn't affect anything with the settings but i found 55 percent to be the sweet spot through all the settings that you can change in the game there's a few other things you can do outside of the game that are going to affect your experience first of all you want to always have your drivers up to date your gpu driver is the most important but all drivers should be up to date issues do come up with drivers they do get fixed fairly frequently especially with games that are pretty big and trust me as someone who's sort of in the programming community i, I do it for a living Snarker 2 is one of those games that is heavily skewing towards that demographic. So if there are issues, a lot of the guys that make the software, the drivers, they're going to be the ones experiencing those and they're way more likely to prioritize those. So driver downloads, that, that's something you want to do, especially if it's right when this game released. If it's a couple years down the line and you're watching this video, it's probably not going to help. But it's always good to have your drivers up to date. Also, if you get stuff running in the background on your computer, you always want to shut down as much as you can. If you get any sort of steam afterburner anything like that that you can shut down 
turn it off. Same with OBS, Streamlabs, all that. You can turn that off. That's going to help with reducing the lag. Same with closing things like Chrome or anything that you've got running in the background. Just shut it all down. It is going to help you run things faster. In addition to this, some other things that you might want to consider is if you do have two drives, installing to your fastest drive, that would be your NVMe drive or your SSD drive. That's always best. It's going to just reduce the time it takes things to load, and it's going to lead to a better experience for you. This, this is across all games. If you have a second monitor or something like that, turning that off can help. And in addition, there's a lot of weird issues that can occur. So if all else fails and the game has just come out, wait a couple days and try it again. Sometimes the devs will push out fixes. A lot of the times the devs will push out fixes and just waiting a couple days saves you hours of work and you can just go play your second favorite game while you wait to play what could be your first favorite game. And let's face it, it probably won't be, but it's still a game that I'd recommend trying out. Thank you for watching and until next time, peace.